Hey, how's it going? We are continuing in Hebrews chapter 2, today, verses 10 through 18. So, here we go. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, He is able to help those who are being tempted. So, this is a a continuation of the understanding of who Jesus is and what He did. So, Jesus suffered. The, The Son of God came and He experienced the same things. He became like us. He came here to be one of us, and since He suffered and He is like us, He's able to save us. And He's not ashamed of us, not ashamed to be called, uh, to call us brothers. This, of course, applies to brothers and sisters. So, you know, we, as followers of Christ, the brothers and sisters in the family of God, have been welcomed into this family because Jesus was willing to come, be like us, to suffer like us, and then bring us into the family. Super, super amazing, wonderful things. And especially, you know, 2,000 years ago, this realization was so fresh and clean that it was just an incredible thing that God would go from presenting himself as the God of Mount Sinai, you know, like earthquakes and smoke. And and if you touch foot on the edge of the mountain, you must be killed, you know, completely unapproachable to the Son of God coming here and bringing salvation through suffering. It's an com- amazing different side of God that is shown in in the New Testament here. It's just amazing. Then verse 14, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. So Jesus came to set us free. To set us free from what? Um, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. So Jesus sets us free from death, from fear of death, from you know the wages of sin, which is death, from the power of the devil, uh, because he has the power of death, it says here, um, might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, So Jesus came to destroy the devil's work. You know, the devil is the one who tempted Eve and Adam uh, into eating the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil so that they would not be able to eat the fruit of the tree of life. And, you know, so the enemy, the devil, has been trying to keep people from accessing eternal life. And yet, through Christ, we can have that. You know, it's huge, huge stuff. And then we see the first talk of Jesus as high priest here in Hebrews. So Jesus is the one, he came here and then he provides for the atonement uh, for our sins. 
he himself made the sacrifice for us. He suffered so that we could be set free. Um, he suffered so he can help us who suffer. We see a lot of talk here in Hebrews about Jesus understanding our plight, being like us, and being able to help us because he came here and he knows what it's like and he's suffered. And we see that here too, that since uh, he was made like us, verse 18, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. So we will see more here in Hebrews, of course, about Jesus as the high priest. But one of the main points is that Jesus became like us so we can trust that He understands what we're going through, the sufferings, the difficulties, the hardships, the loss, um, all of those things He understands so we can go to Him and receive forgiveness. We can go to Him and we don't have to uh, worry that He's not going to understand, that He's just going to pshaw our suffering. So let's pray to open up our hearts and let Jesus help us in our struggles and in our temptations and in our pain because He knows, He's been through it, and He went through it to demonstrate to us that He can relate to us and that we can truly reach up to Him and He will help us. So let's pray along those lines. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your goodness and we thank You, Lord Jesus, that You have demonstrated your love for us by coming here and you suffered and you were tempted and so you know what we are going through and you do not condemn us but you help us and you encourage us. So Lord, we come before you and we bring our temptations, we bring our sufferings, we bring our trials and our hurts before you and Lord, we ask you to guide us through these things. Help us to be overcomers, to not be destroyed by the hardships and the temptations and the suffering that we experience, but help us to grow and become stronger. And Lord, guide us through that because you know how to do it and you love us and you'll guide us. So Lord, that's what we ask. And we pray that you would encourage us and give us strength. In Jesus' name, amen.